Um, if we're going to find the x and y intercept as well as the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, yes, during the instruction, if you can hold off, that'd be great because it'd be helpful for you to know uh, or at least be able to see from this portion. So first thing, guys, we recognize that without, um, we see this as a rational function. So therefore, the x-intercept is just going to be the numerator set equal to 0, right? We already kind of did it the slow way, so now we can do it the fast way, right? Um, so subtract 5, divide by negative 4, x is going to equal a positive 5 fourths. For the y-intercept, we already did it the long way, so let's do it the short way. We recognize that if we plug 0 in for x, we're just going to have constant over constant, which looks like y is going to equal 5. Yes? It would be negative 5. That's supposed to be a negative 1, which I didn't copy down the problem correctly. All right? And then for the vertical asymptotes, we can just say, well, what are the values that make the denominator equal to 0? But we want to make sure it's not going to be divided out, right? And I look at this and I say, OK, there's nothing really, you can't really factor anything to be divided out, right? Yes? OK, so therefore, I'll just say 2x minus 1 equals 0, and x equals 1 half. But the horizontal asymptote's an issue. We could only find the horizontal asymptote when it was in as a reciprocal function. Agreed? So let's per se you miss this phone. Let's say um, you catch up. Everything that, we've just, everything that I've talked about so far, you did not need to be here. Like Wesley just showed up. If I gave this to him on a quiz, he should be able to do this on his own, because we've already talked about this stuff. Agreed? Like this is nothing new. You'd plug 0 in for x and solve. You, you could be able to. Everything we've covered, we've already covered in this class. But the horizontal asymptotes are kind of crazy. Like, how are we going to figure that one out? So the thing is, so maybe Wesley's looking at his quiz and he says, all right, I don't know. Um, I got all this. I need to find the horizontal asymptote. I see a rational function. And I think, you know what? A rational function or a ra or, you know, a fraction is really just a representation of the operation division. Is it possible to use division with polynomials? Yeah, we did that last chapter. So why don't I just, I don't know, give it a shot. See what happens. Let's see what happens when I divide negative, oops, let's do it down here. Why don't I just try to divide 2x minus 1 into negative 4x plus 5? You know, because I'm on a tester quiz, I want to try to get as many points as possible. And let's just see what happens. So we go forward, we say, all right, how many times is 2x divided into negative 4x? Negative 4x divided by 2x, negative 2 times. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 2. Subtract your rows, 3, remainder. OK, so if I remember from chapter 2, it's not a 0 or it's not a factor, right? But do I remember how to write this? Because we didn't practice this in this class. You actually need to kind of dig deep and remember from Algebra 2. In Algebra 2, a lot of times when we were doing long division and syntax division, we had remainders. And so therefore, we learned how to write the quotient with the remainder. And for those of you that do not remember, I will remind you. It is the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. And I wrote it over there as well. The quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. So when you do division, especially with polynomials, and you have that remainder, you can write the quotient as whatever your answer is, your quotient from the division plus the remainder over your divisor. Well, that is the quotient. Now I look at this format and I say, hmm, that kind of looks familiar. What does that look like? Reciprocal form. That is my transformation inside the function. This is my transformation outside of the function. Are oh, you came back to test? Yeah. OK, just hold on, see. Okay. So therefore, what, what is this graph doing? Being shifted. Do you guys want me to write it like this? What if I just put the negative 2 afterwards? It's in front, guys. Why is, does it matter if it's in front or behind? No, it's still a negative 2, and it's outside of the fraction. So therefore, what is that doing to the graph? Down 2. So if my horizontal asymptote is at 0, and the graph just gets shifted down 2, where's my new horizontal asymptote? y equals negative 2. Now, here's the key points, or here's the thing. Really, we did this you know, just so one, you guys understand. Don't just give up on a problem. right? Try to do things you know how to do. But the other key point that I want you to understand is, do you guys see negative 2 inside of the original function? 
Yeah, where do you see it? Yeah, but that's positive 2. You're on the right track, though. Where does anybody see a negative 2? Yeah? They say what? Who said that? What'd you say? That divided by that? Yeah. That is negative 2, isn't it? That's interesting. We'll learn about that later. But yeah, can you guys see it? Yeah? That's where negative 2 also shows up. Now, obviously, yeah, you could create it another way, right? You could like factor out a negative and like provide a negative 2. But um, that is actually 